Welcome back to the film and TV channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well. We're going over to Amazon today, and this is one that the advertisers have in adverts in it. So it was like, not it's on Prime, but it was free with adverts. But when I watched it, we didn't get any adverts, so I'm not too sure what that's all about. But uh, it's not a new one, not brand, it's not a brand new one, but this was watched on Prime on the 3rd of August 2022. It's a British one, so I thought I'd give it a watch, and I'd miss this first time around. It's been around for a few months, I think. Vengeance is mine. We're looking at 84 minutes, a graphic, violent, drug abuse, profanity-based uh, story. <laughs> Cast, Con O'Neill, Sarah Jane Potts, Anton Saunders, Ricky Grover, amongst others. And all these scores are at the 3rd of August, 5pm UK time. Not too bad, actually, on Internet Movie Database. Uh, the public quite like it. 5.6 out of 10. So... All right, not quite up to the 6 out of 10. But then if you look at the breakdown of that, that's over 7,000 reviews. Of those 7,000 reviews, there's quite a lot of 10 out of 10s. Uh, there's quite a few 1 out of 10s as well. But 3,606 people scored it between 6 and 9. And just 398 scored it between 2 and 5. So you're talking 90% positivity, which isn't half bad, is it? Then you go over to Rotten Tomatoes audience, and they're very similar, 85% positivity. So that's probably why I went and watched it. What did I think? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. It's about a guy called Harry Kane, a broken man. No, no, no nothing to do with not playing for City. Uh, no, this is uh, Harry Kane, a broken man, struggling to come to terms with the murder of his wife and daughter and is living a, a solitary life, if you like. Um, and obviously, uh, when we join him where he's obviously contemplating suicide every single day of his life. So it's not much of a life, isn't it? But he discovers, actually, he's looking for the whereabouts of the killers, uh, as, a, as any sort of decent person would do. What he's going to do when he finds out is another matter. But when he discovers the whereabouts of the killers, he awakens from his grief and uh, goes out, tries out to destroy those that destroyed his life. So it's a revenge thriller. It's quite simple. Nothing, no, no rocket science with this one. And the public likes it. What about the critics? Well, yeah, not too bad, actually. Critics... Rotten Tomatoes, 71% positivity, so again, still very good. And 6.1 out of 10. Eh, not half bad. Only, all right, only seven critics, so five fresh and two rotten. Uh, Carly Hay, she was rotten. She was one of the two rotten. She's from Culture Mix. She said, Vengeance is Mine does absolutely nothing unique or creative in a story that has been recycled from the dozens of better vigilante movies that have come before it. It's hard to care about a movie that's so uninspired and forgettable. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to argue too much with that. As I say, a lot of people seem to like this, but I think Carl is quite right. Koda Casado, he was fresh. And what's the reasons? Well, we'll go into that. He's from Freakin', Freakin' Awesome Network yeah, website. He said, Vengeance is mine. It's a quick bite of everyone's favourite dish, best served cold. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the plot revenge for a killed wife and a child, just just the delivery of it and what we get. That's that's the problem for me. Uh, yeah, but here we go, another positive. Movie Nation's Roger Moore, that usually is usually quite mean, Roger. He gave it 63 out of 100. He said, a solid B movie, and that's what it is. Just looking at, I'm not, not thinking this is a big cinematic release. A solid B movie revenge thriller, well acted and tightly put together, kept simple by design. Yeah, well, yeah, most of that I can't, I can't, I can't really argue with. All right, the well acted might be pushing it just a little bit. Uh, it depends what you're used to watching. I mean, if you're used to watching uh, British soaps, and yeah, it probably is well, well, uh, well acted. But so, as I say, I'm not, not going to cause too much with that. But anyway, my little thoughts before we go on on this uh, menu. As you can see, I'm not overly enamoured. I'm not as impressed as the other people. I mean, sadly, yes, of course, it's been done many times better and this and the problem for me i think is con o'neill um i've seen him in many things and he leaves me a bit cold at the most of times and this sort of role was ideal for him he was like a bit of a cold fish he was a bit confused a bit blown out worn out and mentally physically he was absolutely shattered as you would be by the by your death of your wife and child of course you would and perhaps that played to his strengths but again he didn't do a lot for me in this. Is uh, there was uh, there's a big thing made of the th first eight minutes of the film where there was no sound. There was no sound, just mainly him, and obviously people were complimenting on on his on his abilities to to sort of get feelings over without speaking. Okay, well, uh, he, he 
didn't strike me as that. I just, I just don't think he's the greatest person uh, to have in a, a, any film, but as a lead, uh, probably less so. Uh, I just wasn't overly impressed with it. I mean, I always, of course, anything like these films, I always want the baddies to get the comeuppance, of course they do. Uh, so for that, I got behind his character. I wanted him to revenge his, you know, the murder of his wife and kid, but uh, I just found it all a little bit dull and predictable. And it, it's, of course, I, I like things where real people are put into, into, you know, different situations and, you know, all right, where well, you get these guys who all of a sudden can do kung fu and beat up guys, and you you don't know just a normal bloke. But th this is quite right. He's just a normal bloke. He doesn't quite know what he's going to do. He doesn't know quite know how he's going to get about it. He's not very good at it, of course, which you'd expect. But it just didn't really work for me. I just I just found it all a little bit dull and predictable, without any real nuances or or anything to recommend it. Really, it is what it is. It's a revenge thriller, but. Um, very, very forgettable for me, um, and I'm not going to give it a mark. I mean, as I said, I was a bit, a bit upset because I was hoping for something a little bit better based on those reviews. But uh, yeah, it just left me a little bit cold, possibly because of Con O'Neill, but possibly it's just because we've seen it all before, uh, and there's nothing, no, no real twists. Uh, there's a slight twist you could probably say, or if you can call it a twist near the end, but. The ending, well, <laughs> what's the end? If you get to the end, just watch the ending. It was about 84 minutes. It, it went reasonably fast. <laughs> There's a positive. It passed by okay. Uh, it wasn't too draggy, so that, that's a positive. But I'm not going to give it up. Let me know what you think, guys. I don't forget to watch it. Let me know if you get to watch it with adverts as well. Is it just me that didn't get adverts with it? Or <laughs> is it Amazon going potty or am I going potty? Uh, hopefully it's them, not me. Thanks for watching, guys. Please tune in again. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.